So we're going to dive in today what people should be focusing on in their PPC. Now, a lot of people are focusing on ACOS and TACOS. And if you're just focusing on those, you can really be missing a larger part of the puzzle. So we're really going to dive into what people should be looking at in their PPC to really maximize and grow their market share for their product. So where do you want to start with that? Uh, uh, with the ACOS, TACOS, let's go ahead and dive into that. Yeah, yeah. I'd like to talk with, with ACOS. I think with that, it might be helpful to talk a little bit about the evolution of the advertising platform, which I definitely went through. Because I remember the conversations that happened when I was having those first conversations. The questions were, hey, do I need to run advertising? Like, And if I do, you know, maybe how? There's a little bit of tidbits. And um, now the question is, how do I run advertising? It's like a huge integral piece of the business. Was Amazon getting rid of search find buys? Like, for which PPC mm -hmm. only launches are definitely a thing now. And so with that, with that evolution, it also came an additional complexity. So in the beginning, it was like, you know, you could do the old school, start with autos, move to manuals, or, you know, you could slowly inch into it. Or it's like, where do I even start? Ah, you pretty much like there's two options, right? <laughs> and start with this one. These days, the, the complexity just seems to be exponential. In addition to that, there's been just a real uptick of one Amazon putting more advertising placements on their platform, which mm -hmm. is great for Amazon. Sure. Also means there's less organic spots. So it's much harder to, you know, much more competitive game these days and much more of a pay to play type system. And then the other one is it, it just, again, the increase in competition. So it, the Amazon platform is very much mature. There's been a lot of opportunity with the aggregators that came in. It really like solidified Amazon as like a very solid business model where before it was like, ah, oh, you're an Amazon seller. Now it's it's a little bit more considered. I, I really don't think anything has changed, but you know, it's it's, it's more business, whatever that means, right? More accepted. Um, more accepted. That's a good way to put it. I like that. And and but so with all of that, what has happened with the increase in competition, the increase in complexity, and then just the increase in fees and just the current market being what it is, the bottom line is getting squeezed more and more. Well, the mm -hmm. problem is in that sellers find is there's this tension between if you're if you're a private label seller, you have to grow off your own merit. You're not enterprise. You can't say like, hey, let's throw 25 grand at it. Let's see what happens and optimize from there. Like that's no, you, if you do that, you're going to be completely out of business. And so there's this like tension and necessity to figure out a way to be able to still grow your business. Cause that's the other factor is that Amazon advertising will grow your business. It will lead to organic market share. The question is, can you do it in a way that is going to be beneficial to the business long term? And not completely destroy cash flow. So you end up in six months and you're like, oh, great, I have no runway, I can't grow. Mm -hmm. And so that's that's really where we find if you don't take like a more, the buzzword probably is like a holistic view to advertising or basically like how does advertising lead to these other growth factors that are not strictly within ad console. And so what we find is that any sellers who are, specifically focused on ad console as like their only metrics will oftentimes again due to the rising competition due to the complexity will lead them to make decisions that hurt that long-term growth strategy and so why it's it's a problem if you like only focus in on a cost or you're only focusing on ROAS on other marketing platforms that makes total sense right? Because you're only looking at that one specific platform. It's not like it leads to additional growth factors. Mm -hmm. um, or you might be looking at, say, customer lifetime value in those cases, which makes total sense. But the thing is that with the Amazon platform, customer lifetime value actually extrapolates out to like additional shoppers finding you, not just that one shopper repeat purchase. And so what we find is that it really takes... Again, taking like a broader, more long-term view to what your advertising is doing, a good barometer for that tends to be tacos is a good one because I give that plays into like profitability metrics. The other one that we would look at, we call um, like the ratio of ads to organic, we call it ad sale percentage. So like ad sales divided by total sales, like what percentage of my total sales is being like, do I have to rely on ads to generate? 
So -hmm. of course, the higher that number, the more reliant you are on your ads, the less you have the organic. So it's like looking at how is my advertising today influencing better numbers tomorrow and just making sure that you're working towards that instead of, again, like a hyper narrow focus that you'll wake up and three months ago, oh, wait, I have no organic market share to speak of. And then you're kind of end up stuck 